physicsninja.org. Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today we're, I got a great problem for you. We're going to look at the electric field uh, from a continuous charge distribution. So consider the wire I've got here on the whiteboard. I want to look at three specific questions. I want to find the electric field when I'm a uh, distance x away from that wire and I've placed it uh, kind of right at the center of the wire. Second part is I want to take that expression and I want to see what happens when I go really, really far from the wire. What does the electric field look like when I'm really far from the wire? And in the third case, I want to see what happens now if I put my position right near the wire. Right? When I'm really close to the wire, the wire looks really, really long. So we're going to look at our expression and take the right limits and see what the expression uh, simplifies to. So let's get started. I have a wire here that has a length L. Uh, it has a total charge Q, and its charge is uniformly distributed over the length. So let's see how to solve this problem. <clears throat> OK, so let's start by looking at this system a little bit more closely. So we've got our wire here, got our distance x to the point P. And now let's consider a small little bit of charge somewhere on the wire. And the magnitude of that charge is dQ. Now, this little charge is going to produce an electric field at point P, and it's going to be in this direction, and the magnitude of that field is going to be dE. Now you notice, uh, since I've kind of picked the position of the point X to be kind of in the center of that wire, every time there's a little charge dQ up on the top, there's also going to be a little charge dQ on the bottom, and that one's also going to produce an electric field with the same magnitude but in this direction. It's pointing away from that small charge if it's positive. So one thing you notice, if I define this to be the angle theta, and this is also going to be the angle theta, what we're going to notice here is that if you would replot those vectors, you'll see that those vectors can be broken down into components and the y components of those vectors are going to cancel out. They're going to be equal and opposite. So we can conclude right away, just from the symmetry of the problem, that the total field EY is going to be equal to zero okay. by the symmetry of the problem. Every time there's a little charge dQ on the positive y-axis, there's going to be another charge dQ on the negative y-axis, so their contributions are always going to cancel out. So that's kind of the first part. Uh, the second part is, the total field is going to be simply in the x direction, right? Since the y components cancel, and well, there's going to be two of them, right? There's a contribution from the charge at the bottom, and there's going to be a contribution from the charge at the top. So you can actually write the x component as being, well, the magnitude times cos of theta. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add all the x contributions from every single charge here along the length of the wire. So in order to do that, let's find what the magnitude of dE is, and let's substitute what the value of cos theta is, and then we're going to add all the contributions of dE. So we're left with dE is going to be E. Uh, what's this magnitude of the vector? Well, this is simply the magnitude of the field produced by a charge dQ. That's simple. That's the expression we know. K, the magnitude of the charge, divided by the distance squared. And the distance squared is simply the distance from the charge dQ to the point where I'm evaluating. That's our vector r. And I can write that in terms of uh, the distance x and plus the distance from uh, the origin to that charge. Let's call that y. So here's my uh, distance from the charge to the point. The other thing I need to do now is find what is the angle cos theta. Well the angle cos theta is also defined here. Right? So you can see cos theta is simply x divided by, by r. So if you simplify things, you'll have k dq x divided by r cubed. All right, great. 
The next thing we have to do now is, well, let's get rid of dq, because we're going to have to add over all of our small little charges. Okay. And the way you do that is through the charge density. Remember, our charge density for this wire uh, was simply the total charge divided by the total length. So that also means that I can write the charge density as dq divided by the small length, dy, of this small tiny segment. Okay. So this is kind of something you always do when you're dealing with charge distributions is you have to eliminate that small charge and write it in terms of the charge density. So for this specific problem, this is kind of what we want to do here. All right, we can substitute that in our expression for the electric field. And we can replace R with our variable, or the actual distance here, from each small charge dq to the point P. And we're left with this expression over here. That DE, and it's only the X component here that you're looking at, is simply KX. Now the charge DQ, I replace it with lambda, our charge density, times the small element of length DY, and divided by R cubed. Well, R is the root of X squared plus Y squared. Therefore, R cubed, this is going to be to the 3 halves. All right, at the end, you want to evaluate everything. You want to find the total field. And again, it's only in the x direction. So what you have to do is you have to sum or integrate all the contributions of all the dx values. So that means we want to integrate the right-hand side of our electric field expression here. So that's k lambda x dy over x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. And we're going to integrate that. We're integrating over y. Okay? We're integrating y, and y goes, if the total length of the wire is L, y will go from minus L over 2 all the way to L over 2. All right. Now to simplify this a little bit further, we can take out all the constants. If you take out all the constants, you're simply going to get that the total expression for the electric field, at least the magnitude of the x component, is going to be k is a constant. I could take it out of the integral. Lambda is a constant. And I'm left with the integral from minus L over 2 to L over 2 of x dy uh, divided by x squared plus y squared to the 3 halves. All right. So actually, I could have factored out the x, right? The x is also a constant for this problem. So let's do that right now. Let me take the x out, and let's just put it out here. All right. So let's go see how to evaluate this term. OK, the next step I did was, well, we have to evaluate this integral. And actually, in its current form, this is actually not that easy. So what I did was I simply went up and looked it up in an integral table. Kind of cheated a little bit, but that's OK. I think once you get this result here, you can do that. So simply look it up in an integral table. And after, you're able to write that the total electric field magnitude in the x direction or the x component of the field is simply going to be, and I'm going to evaluate this, so everything in the square bracket is what I looked up in the integral table. And I'm integrating over y, so I'm going to get y up here. I'm going to get x squared here. And square root of x squared plus y squared, and evaluated between L over 2 and minus L. All right, so the next step is you simply substitute in R limits here, and this simplifies nicely to a result that looks like, like this. So we're going to have L over 2 divided by x squared, x squared plus 
L over 2 squared, and minus, and again, now we're going to have the same thing now, minus L over 2 x squared Okay, so our final expression for the electric field, or the magnitude of the electric field, which is in the x direction, is simply going to be, both of those terms uh, double up, okay, they add up together, and that means that this factor of 2 in the denominator here is going to leave. So we're going to be left with k lambda L, there's still an x term over there, and this whole term is still there, the square root of x squared uh, plus L over 2 squared. Now one simplification you can make, you can get rid of the uh, charge density. Remember the charge density we can write as the total charge divided by the total length. The nice thing about making this substitution is it's going to get the final solution in a nice form because it's going to eliminate this length over here. So let's do that. So we're going to be left with K the total charge that was on the wire divided by x divided by x squared plus L over 2 squared. So here's the final expression we get for our electric field produced by the wire when I'm a distance x away from the center of the wire. Alright, so now let's manipulate this formula a little bit and see what happens when we're really far away from the wire. So we're going to make x very very big and take the right limit and what happens when x is small compared to the overall length of the wire. Okay, so now let's take uh, the limit when we're going to be really, really far away from the wire. So actually, I didn't probably exaggerate this diagram enough, but we're going to take the limit here when x is much, much bigger than L. So how do we simplify this expression when x is very big? Well, for that, you simply have to expand the denominator. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to leave that x term alone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out one of the x terms from that square root. And rather than writing a square root, I'm simply going to write it as something raised to the 1 half. <laughs> so if I take out an x, and I already had an x on the outside, I'm going to have x squared over here. Now I'll be left with 1 plus L over 2 squared uh, divided by, it's also going to be divided by x squared because I factored out x, uh, an x squared term. Okay, now what do we do? Well, take a look at this term over here. This term in the denominator, if x is very, very big compared to L, this term in the denominator, at least this second part of it, is going to be a very, very small term. So you're going to have 1 plus something that is very, very small. Okay. And the way you expand that, so if I have 1, 1 plus a variable, let's call it alpha, where alpha is very, very small, and in this case this is also raised to the 1 power, this here is approximately equal to 1 minus 1 half alpha. Actually, for this specific problem, let's even just keep the 1. Let's not even worry about this term, right? If x is very big, I divide by a very big number, this term is negligible compared to the 1. And what you're left with is simply, at the, the field, ex is simply kq divided by x squared. Well, that should look like a really familiar result. Right? This is exactly the field you'd get if it was a point charge with a charge Q right here at the origin and you were a distance X away and you were really far away, right? Looks like a point charge. So even though you had a uniform charge distribution here, once you're really, really far away, it basically just looks like a point. So I kind of expect that result uh, even before doing any of the calculation. Okay, so let's have a look now what happens when I'm really close to the wire. Uh, so the distance x relative to the overall length um, is much, much smaller. Okay. So how do you simplify this expression in that limit? Well, 
So in that limit, now what I can first do is I can first factor out a term from the bottom. It's similar to the previous case, so let's keep those terms the same, except now instead of factoring out an x, I don't want to do that because x is going to be small. Okay. Actually, what I want to do this time is I want to factor out an L over 2 term. If I factor out an L over 2 term, well, this term here is going to be 1. And plus, I'm going to be left with x, L over 2 squared, and everything to the 1 half. Right. You might have to just think about that for a little bit. All right, so now we're in the limit of x much, much less than L. So what can I do to this term? Again, if x is much, much less than L, this second term is very small compared to 1. Okay. So if it's very small compared to 1, let's just get rid of it. So that's also the reason why you want to factor out an L over 2 now. You want to end up getting an expression in this denominator where we have 1 plus something that is very, very small. All right, so at the end, once you make this approximation, you can write that the field in the x direction is simply going to be, uh, there's an L over 2 term, I'm going to bring that 2 to the top, that's kq uh, divided by x, and there's still an L there, I can't forget the total charge, q over L like this, and this whole term simply becomes 1, the square root of 1, which is 1. The last thing I can do now is, uh, we can simplify this a little bit. And for the long wire, it's probably best to write this in terms of, again, there's our factor of total charge divided by the total length. That's simply the charge density. So you can write this as 2 times uh, the constant k, our charge density, divided by x. So the magnitude of the electric field produced by a wire when you're very close to it is simply this expression over here. Again, if you remember what the constant k is, k is simply 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. So if you substitute that in there, you're going to end up getting over 2 pi epsilon 0 times x. Actually, this is the exact same result you get using Gauss's law. I have a video on that. You can go have a look at it. But if you want to find the field produced by an infinitely long wire or a really long wire, you can use Gauss's law due to the symmetry of the problem, and you'll get to the same result here in the right-hand box. PhysicsNinja.org